Welcome to GRE. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Learn 18 profound life lessons I've learned that I wish I could share with my 18-year-old self. And has the time come? After the long and sometimes steep housing price run-up, is a housing price crash finally imminent? And what's the future direction of the housing market today on Get Rich Education? If you're looking to grow your passive income from real estate, pay attention. My Property Stats is a deal analysis tool developed by an active investor to cut the time it takes to analyze any deal by over 90%. For any real estate class, you can calculate the exact price to pay to hit your cash flow and IRR goals, build a world-class pro forma, calculate the most you should pay for a renovation, run multiple scenarios with a comparison tool, and more. My Property Stats is the all-in-one toolkit for real estate investors. That means more deals, more cash flow, and more returns. Go to mypropertystats.com slash GRE now and use the coupon code GRE to get 10% off your first year. That's just $90 a year for a tool that can save 10 hours per deal. No more spreadsheets, no more juggling multiple files. Use coupon code GRE to get 10% off at mypropertystats.com slash GRE. Knowing the difference between a turnkey provider and a vertically integrated rental property company can cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars over the life of your investment. Some companies sell you a property they don't own, renovate it with contractors they don't control, refer you to a property management company they don't manage, all in multiple markets because they can't source enough inventory. That's why truly passive investors work with our friends at JWB Real Estate Capital, perhaps the country's only vertically integrated rental property investment company. They operate in one market, Jacksonville, Florida, and their whole job is to make investing in rental properties easy for you. In fact, because of their vertically integrated approach, their clients have gained 79% more home price appreciation than the overall Jacksonville market since 2013. Find out more about why it pays to invest with JWB. Call them at 904-677-6777 or go to jwbrealestate.com slash GRE. GRE listeners can't stop talking about their service from Ridge Lending Group and MLS 42056. They've provided our tribe with more loans than anyone. They're truly a top lender for beginners and veterans. It's where I go to get my own loans for single family rental property up to fourplexes. So start your pre-qualification and you can chat with President Chaley Ridge personally. They'll even deliver your custom plan for growing your real estate portfolio. Start at RidgeLendingGroup.com. You're listening to the show that has created more financial freedom than nearly any show in the world. This is Get Rich Education. Welcome to GRE from Red Deer, Alberta to Red Rock State Park, Arizona and across 188 nations worldwide. I'm Keith Weinhold. This is Get Rich Education, the voice of real estate investing, 412 weeks in a row since 2014. I hope that you're having a great week. You know, I have seemingly been a late bloomer in almost every day in life that you can conceive. But as some say, many people never bloom at all. All right, well enough. But look, I was almost 18 years old when I graduated high school, just like perhaps you and many people are, but I looked like I was 13 then. I was among the very last in my class to experience puberty there at Countersport High School, Pennsylvania. This is one reason that I could not attract a high school girlfriend or get a prom date, even though I asked a girl to prom and she said no. As underdeveloped and impressionable as I was then, here are 18 lessons that I want to share with my 18-year-old self. I wish that I could share these lessons that I've learned now with my 18-year-old self. First is, you know nothing, but you're not alone. You have so much to learn, 18-year-old Keith, so don't act like you know it all. 
society actually likes when you're genuinely inquisitive and want to learn. And what about you? Can't you sense when someone acts like a know-it-all? It's not something that you want to be around. Back to advising my 18-year-old self. Number two, don't fear being different. That's your advantage. In high school and even college, winners fit in. And in the real world, winners stand out. In fact, avoid normalcy. It is a synonym for mediocrity. Third, work to learn. After that, work to earn. Number four, no one cares about your college grades. For your interests, college is optional, not mandatory, regardless of what your friends are doing. Find an energy for learning. Be autodidactic. An autodidact means a self-taught person. Focus on becoming a person of value. Number five, keep moving. Health is wealth. Prioritize physical exercise over money making. No matter what you choose to do, you will be living inside that same body when you're age 100. Sixthly, failure can be all right, even good. In school, you learn that mistakes are bad and should be avoided. A failure that you recuperate from demonstrates that you tried. You learned a lesson. In fact, decorate your failures so much that you should go ahead and tell others how bad you failed. And they'll either relate to you or they'll learn from you. Number seven, don't follow paths that others have made. Others guide you, but create your own map. If you're soullessly trading your time for dollars at a job, you need to redesign yourself an escape route with priority so that you can quit as soon as possible. If you're selling your time that way, stop it. Your very life is made up of chapters of time. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is your life. Eighth, research, commit, and then be consistent. Prepare for disappointment. Most people will not be as committed as you Showing up on time is a commitment, so is marriage. Number nine, learn about investing in real estate. Everyone needs it. It's made more ordinary people wealthy than anything else. Tenth, keep real estate and emotions separate. Facts trump feelings. It is 99% about market management and income exceeding expenses in investment property. Eleventh, make grandma proud. Pretend that she's watching you. Live a life that's exemplary in what you say and do. You might remember me mentioning my late grandma Weinhold here on the show. Number twelve, young Keith, be present. Don't over-anticipate future moments and events. They are less important than the present. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on your entire life. Your life will never not be now appreciate now. Number 13, who your friends are matters. Jim Rohn said, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. So take your five and average your closest five's values and average their athleticism, their ethics, their wealth, their fashion sense, their travel experience, their neighborhood quality, and their family structure that is nearly who you will become. Number 14, finding the truth is more important than being right. People respect you when you say, I was wrong, here's why, quite a bit more than trying to defend some antiquated or faulty belief. Number 15, give. Money is an abundant resource. You will have a great ability to give. Generosity is championed in the Bible. It's Aristotle's third virtue. It's going to make you feel happy. It's good for your health. It's contagious and it spurs gratitude. Giving ossifies your net value add to the world. Number 16, mentors matter. Others see you in a way that you cannot. You'll simply never be able to see yourself in a way that others can. You're going to meet people smarter than you 
ask them for their help. Seventeenth, what does life want from you? As I learned from Eckhart Tolle, don't ask, what do I want from life? A more powerful question is, what does life want from me? And you'll remember that I mentioned this one last week on the show here and took a deeper dive on it. Eighteenth, the final lesson that I'd like to go back and share with my 18-year-old self is build. Anthropologists suggest that almost every person is forgotten after three to four generations. At your trajectory, what will your legacy be? Why and how will you be remembered? They are the 18 lessons right there. And the Stoic Epictetus said one of the most profound motivational things ever, and it's in the form of a question. Epictetus said, how long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself? Yeah, that is his question. At least here on this earth, this is your last life ever. Now, as much as some of those 18 might resonate with you, and maybe you want to share those with someone in your life, I've seriously got to ask, (laughs) if I read those as an 18-year-old, knowing that I wrote them a couple decades later, would I have even listened to those as an 18-year-old? I don't know. I probably wouldn't have changed my behavior on some of them, but a few. I've also got to wonder, in another 20 years, will these change? 20 years from now, would I be advising my 18-year-old self any differently? Now, I discussed in there how anthropologists suggest that most every human is forgotten in three or four generations. Sadly, quite a few people are forgotten three to four minutes after their death, and many more within three to four hours, three to four days or three to four weeks after their death. Of course, your children are going to remember you longer, and your spouse of, say, 50 years will remember you longer. Realistically, lots of people are soon forgotten because they never did anything worth remembering. Good people are forgotten. People that never caused any trouble or uproar, they kept their lawns mowed. They kept their cars clean but nothing notable worth remembering, like caring for lost animals or handicapped children or always remembering their friends' birthdays. For a thoughtful person, it is wise to consider from time to time, what have I done recently that people will want to remember? And of course, we should all do every day those things necessary to be a good neighbor, a good landlord, and a good citizen. If you don't do that, you might be remembered because you were such a slob, or you took care of your house so badly, or you didn't bother to shave and shower regularly. But assuming you are doing everything so that absolutely no one will be offended or no one will be annoyed, then you have to do something special if you're going to be remembered for longer than a few days or a few weeks. And I think it's important to recognize something. Abraham Lincoln, he died six or seven generations ago, and he's remembered with respect and honor. John Wilkes Booth died just a few days after Lincoln. He is remembered with despising and scorn. So it is a mixed blessing for you to be remembered. For most people, they would prefer to be forgotten rather than remembered as a deviant or a monster or a social parasite if that's what they were. My own guess is that very few people are remembered in a positive light for as long as four generations. That's pretty rare. And they might be listed in a family genealogy, but beyond being a statistical item, the individuals and who they are have been long forgotten. It's been said that the greatest waste in the world is the difference between who you are and who you could become. And now, be real with me. Is what I'm telling you making you pensive and even melancholy about your own mortality? How do you feel in your heart right now? How do you feel in your stomach right now? What's your mind telling you here? Cheer up a little. I want you to take some solace in the fact that 
I believe there are actually more important things than for you to be remembered for decades and for generations. But doing those more important things, rather, like helping other people and making the world better and advancing the store of useful knowledge, that will usually lead to you being remembered long after you've passed on into your next life. And that's probably the person that you strive to be here on Earth after all. If you're still feeling like you're not enough, well, I don't have all the answers, but you just got 18 lessons so that you can listen to those again and see which ones fit into your life. I'll be back with some GRE core content about real estate and a housing price crash. I'm Keith Weinhold. You are listening to Get Rich Education. You can get a 50-year-old house somewhere or buy a new one directly from the builder with tenant resilient amenities already built in. With over 3,000 Florida units at different construction stages, they are exclusively for investors. President Wagner and Alaska and team also invest strongly in their own product. That's belief. Start at buildtorentdirect.com. That's build the number two rentdirect.com or text 407-927-5074. Hey, my friend Damian Lupo informed me the checkbook IRAs have been made illegal by the U.S. tax court. If you have a checkbook IRA, your holdings are now disqualified with taxes and penalties up to 50%. But don't panic, Damian and the EQRP company can fix this. Those IRAs can be converted into EQRPs retroactive to last year, getting those tax deductions and reducing your taxable income. In this way, you can invest your 401k or IRA in real estate, Bitcoin, gold, and even your own business. So whether you're a full-time investor or retired or even a dentist with dozens of employees, if you're listening, you qualify, the EQRP works. It's a solution. You'll control your money, kill UBIT, and pay way less taxes. To learn more about this strategy and free up your retirement money, get the newest EQRP special report. Text GRE to 307-213-3475. That's text GRE to 307-213-3475. This is GRE Operations Lead, Andrea Newburn. Listen to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold and don't quit your daydream. You're listening to one of America's longest running and most listened to real estate shows. Welcome back to GRE. I'm your host and my name is Keith Weinhold. I am genuinely grateful for your listenership. There will only ever be one episode 412 of Get Rich Education, and you're listening to it. If you'd like today's show notes, simply go to getricheducation.com slash 412. It includes not just today's supplemental resources, but an entire transcript of today's episode. Some people like to say housing prices, ah, they don't matter to cash flow investors. And to that, I say, come on now. Price might not be the principal consideration, but price matters. If it didn't, well, then why not just pay triple the asking price on your next property purchase? Why does every classified ad have a price in it? So, of course, real estate price matters even to cash flow centric investors. It matters when you're buying, it matters when you're selling, it matters for you to have an adequate equity cushion for your refinancings. U.S. home sales dropped last month. Now, that's nothing new. That just means sales volume. Housing supply is part of the reason for a volume drop because available supply is still just half or less of what's needed, and it will be a multi-year problem. I've discussed all that before. The dearth of supply is an inelastic condition, meaning that it's difficult to change. Well, what's the way out of that undersupplied condition? It is often home building. Well, many believe that home builders are in a recession. Some are building less while they wait for affordability to improve. This is only going to prolong America's housing supply problem. Now, let's look at prices. Since July of 2019, 
which was back before you knew the definition of pandemic. And back then, the only time that you wore masks were for Halloween. <laughs> well, since that time, July 2019, home prices have risen 44.5%. Yeah, 44.5% in price appreciation in just three years. Now, if we shorten that up to year-over-year -year median house price growth in America, well, it's still 10.8%. That continues to come down. But the median sale price from June to July of this year eased from about $414,000 down to $404,000. $414 to $404. Oh, now, some might say that's hardly a change at all. No, I think it's meaningful. Because all we've seen are both year-over-year -year and month-over-month -month housing price increases for years now. Is this an aberration or is it a trend to come? Of course, no one really knows, but I do think it's worth paying attention to. Has the time come? Did real estate prices run up too far, too fast, meaning that they have got to come crashing down to earth in a streaking fireball that's going to leave an indelible crater. Let's explore that. Well, first of all, the definition of the word crash, that's somewhat amorphous. But if it's equated to a bear market, that means a 20% price decline. Well, that's highly unlikely that a decline like this is imminent. Housing values are famously stable. Today's homeowners have oodles of protective equity, and their loans were well underwritten in the first place, and the supply is staying low. You're a smart listener. You listen here every week, and you're probably apprised of all that. But did you know that even during the astoundingly irresponsible and toxic global financial crisis, and mortgage meltdown of 2007 to 2010, that back then, during that cataclysmic event, housing prices fell less than 20% nationally? Yeah, they didn't even crash 20% then, 15 years ago. And those were the days of liar loans and 105% LTVs and loose appraisals because appraisers were in cahoots with lenders. And we had a glut of national housing supply and a foreclosure crisis in nearly every housing market malady that you can think of. Housing values didn't fall 20% amidst that apocalyptic environment. And I made sure that this chart was put in the show notes for you so that you can see that. That is the median sale price of houses sold in the United States sourced by the Federal Reserve Economic Data through the U.S. Census and HUD. Now, back to today, homes are being snapped up quickly. That's what a lack of supply makes happen, and we'll still have a lack of supply in 2023 and 2024. In fact, last month, the NAR tells us that the median home sold was just 14 days in July. It has never been faster than that on record. That is not something that you would expect amidst stalled price growth. Well, higher mortgage rates will do that. The American housing market reached a turning point this summer. Price increases haven't just slowed, they have stalled. And of course, I'm talking nationally. Local factors often supersede the national ones. So then let's parse this out. Where are home values least resilient? Areas that were trendy and higher priced homes. And where are home values most resilient? In lower priced and entry level properties. And they're the ones least affected by further losses in this affordability. And this is the class of housing that we've talked about on this show from day one. Investing in entry level homes for cash flow in the Midwest and South. Well, who else do stalled price increases harm? Well, that harms sellers because price matters, remember? This harms new owners that hope to refinance fast, and this can harm flippers. And who do stalled price increases help? It helps buyers, and it also helps rent-to-price ratios. If you are wondering when rents will get a chance to catch up to prices, that answer is squarely 
now. The recent outsized rent growth has clearly been a big benefit to us real estate investors, and it's even been a windfall if you're well leveraged. Now, let's think about the American workplace. The pandemic spawned the great resignation. People either started working from home or they just altogether quit and they stayed at home. They were on their Peloton bike and they were on Zoom. But tons of companies from Peloton to Zoom have seen consumers end their pandemic buying patterns. Now, so has housing. The pandemic era frenzy where buyers hotly demanded more space in a Zoom room. That's what I have called the great reshuffling. Well, this has settled down too. So with the point of being overly obvious compared to just a few months ago, this housing market has become worse for sellers and better for buyers. Sellers, you might even have to stage properties again. And buyers, let's run a vibe check on how well you're doing for new purchases that you put into your portfolio. Now, you can usually not have to pay all cash. You'll often have less buyer competition. You can expect time for a property inspection, something that I nearly always recommend. Buyers, you now have an appraisal contingency that you can put there in the contract. You can avoid an escalation clause on build to rents, like I've discussed with guests here in recent weeks past. You know, a friend just shared something with me. He said, we are officially back into the 2018 real estate market. I made an offer today on a brand new flip. I got 10K of seller help and a half page of contingencies. That's what he said. Yeah, that really sums up a lot. The market has normalized, but it's not become totally normal by any stretch. But yeah, the negotiations between buyers and sellers are clearly more balanced now. There's one group that loves higher mortgage rates, and that is single family rental owners, because this crimped affordability which has priced out the first time home buyer and has made them rent from you. That is what's continuing to push up rents at faster increases than historic norms. Fannie Mae expects that home sales will decrease in the next year. That's the volume of sales. Again, that's nothing new. The volume of existing home sales has been decreasing for many months. So where does that leave today's first time home buyer? the person that is really becoming more of a rare breed, that person that didn't have to pay rent to you in your property because they became a first-time home buyer. Well, the National Association of Realtors revealed a profile of today's first-time home buyer, and I think this is particularly interesting. Today's first-time home buyer is 33 years old. That is the oldest ever ever. It might not surprise you since affordability is down, so it takes a new home buyer longer to save and form the capital necessary for a down payment and closing costs and kind of get their financial life in order for mortgage loan qualification. Yeah, the first time home buyer age is now on average 33. That's the typical one. Their household income is $86,500. The median purchase price for the first time home buyer is $252,000. So significantly less than today's median priced home of about 400K. The first time home buyer's typical down payment on average, it is 7%. That's what they put down. So they're often paying PMI then. 37% of them carry student debt, and the typical loan balance on that student debt is $30,000. How about the average square footage for the first time home buyer today? That average footage of their home is 1640, 1,640 square feet. So that is pretty comparable to what makes a good rental single family home square footage, something like that. That's really interesting. That is the profile of the first time home buyer today, according to the NAR. 
Now, I've largely been discussing either total housing supply or single-family housing supply here on the show. One, I guess, bright spot is for apartment dwellers. 420,000 new apartments are forecast to be built in the U.S. this year. That's according to Rent Cafe. And that comes on top of 2021 when there was historically high apartment construction. And in fact, this marks the first time since 1972 that more than 400,000 new apartments were completed in each of two straight years. And the top spot for new apartments this year is in the New York City metro area. Elsewhere out there in the world, Netflix is about to launch a Shark Tank-like real estate show called Buy My House. Yeah, it's structured a lot like Shark Tank, except that homeowners pitch their house sale deal to four sharks. That could be interesting to watch. Here coming up at GRE, you'll be able to hear from not just me, but as usual, some of the most influential personalities in the real estate and finance space. They commonly come alongside me for an episode here. Ramit Sethi from I Will Teach You To Be Rich is one of those notable names that will join you and I here on an upcoming show. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about the show, you can always reach out to us at getricheducation.com slash contact. That's how to get a hold of our team. One question that we're really not in need of hearing over there on our contact page, I hope I can say this respectfully, one question we don't need is, how do I become a guest on the show? <laughs> you know, a couple years ago, we had about 20 times as many requests to be a featured guest here on the show as there are available appearances. Well, anymore, it's about 50 times as many requests as there are weekly shows. We're sorry to have to apologize to so many wonderfully bright and credentialed people. I really appreciate them. But we only have one big weekly show, and that supply is not increasing. GRE show supply could be even more inelastic than the American housing supply then. And I'd like to welcome our newest show sponsor, MyPropertyStats.com. It was developed by Hayden Crabtree. Hayden has been a show guest here before, and we expect to have him back here to tell us more about My Property Stats. It's a deal analysis tool developed by an active investor, Hayden, to cut the time it takes you to analyze any deal by over 90%. You can calculate the exact price to pay to hit your cash flow and ROI goals. You can build a world-class pro forma. In fact, you can go to mypropertystats.com slash GRE right now and use coupon code GRE to get 10% off your first year. It's remarkably inexpensive. That's just $90 a year for a tool that can save 10 hours per deal. No more spreadsheets, no more juggling multiple files. You can use coupon code GRE to get 10% off at mypropertystats.com slash GRE. Much like the gratefulness I feel for all of the bright guests that are here, we've seen quite an influx of advertising inquiries here. And this is despite that we really haven't pitched for advertisers here, much like guests. Fortunately, there are plenty of wonderful resources out there that want to reach you, the listener here. And these are resources that I don't just endorse, but I often use them myself. If you'd like to make an advertising inquiry here at GRE, you can also reach out at the contact page at getricheducation.com slash contact. I'm Keith Weinhold. I'll catch you next Monday, Labor Day. You've been listening to Get Rich Education. Don't quit your daydream. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, GetRichEducation.com.